Hi, my loves. I hope you're enjoying your break. It is our first day of break. Um, and you can see that I am comfy in my bed. Um, I have pajama pants on. So I am relaxing at home. I hope all of you are being able to relax at home or play with friends and family members or just spend some time doing some things that you want to do. Um, I dyed my hair. That's something I wanted to do. I made it pink um, just on the ends. It looks normal on the top. Um, we'll see if it'll last by the time we get back to school. If it doesn't, I may redo it so that you all can see it in person. Um, I am going to read to you. Um, I'm almost done with chapter 18. I have my my phone so I can I can read. Um, I'm on page 388 of 448, um, but the pages are short. It goes pretty quickly, so I'm gonna read for probably 15 or 20 minutes. Um, find a good place to stop. It probably will not take me very long um, to finish the book, and then I will start reading um, Summer of the Monkeys next and I'll go ahead and start that um I'll record for y'all every day over break um if you uh want to listen um so that being said um where we were at before is um Billy and Papa had just gotten home um with old Dan and little Anne um, and given the cups to the girls. So he gave the silver cup to his two older sisters and he gave the golden cup, which is the one they won for the championship, um, to the baby sister because the baby had asked um, if she could have the, the cup. Um, and the silver one, of course, was for little Anne. Little Anne won like the dog, the dog show um, at the... Um, at the hunt um so i had um two cups that's where i was two cups mama explain exclaimed did you win two yes mama i said little ann won that one all by herself the odd expression on my mother's face was wonderful to see holding a cup in each hand she held them out in front of her two she said a gold one and a silver one who would have thought anything so wonderful could have happened to us I'm so proud, so very proud. Handing the cups back to the girls, she walked over to Papa. After kissing him, she said, I just can't even believe everything that has happened. I'm so glad you went along. Did you enjoy yourself? With a smile on his face, Papa almost shouted, Enjoy myself? Why, I never had such a time in my life. His voice trailed off to a low calm. That is, except for one thing. Grandpa had a bad accident. Yes, I know, Mama said. One of Tom Logan's boys was at the store when they arrived. He came by and told us all about it. The doctor said it wasn't as bad as it looked, and he was pretty sure Grandpa would be home in a few days. I was happy to hear this news, and could tell by the pleased look on my father's face he was glad to hear it, too. On entering the house, Papa said, Oh, I almost forgot. He handed the box of money to Mama. What's this? she asked. Oh, just a little gift from old Dan, from old Dan and little Ann, Papa said. Mama opened the box. I saw the color drain from her face. Her hands started trembling. Turning back to us, she walked over and set it on the mantel. A peaceful silence settled over the room. I could hear the clock ticking away. The fire in the fireplace crackled and popped. Turning from the mantel, Mama looked straight at us. Her lips were tightly pressed together to keep them from quivering. Slowly walking to Papa, she buried his face in his, buried her face in his chest. I heard her say, thank God, my prayers have been answered. Because remember, they they won the money. The hunters took a, a collection for who would win, to give to who would win the championship. And since Billy won, they gave it to him, and it was like $300. Um, but with how what money was back then remember we decided that um it was about four thousand dollars in today's money so that's that's quite a bit of money there was a celebration in our home that night to me it was like a second christmas mama opened a jar of huckleberries and made a large cobbler papa went to the smokehouse and came back with a hickory cured ham 
We sat down to a feast of ham, huge plates of fried potatoes, ham gravy, hot cornbread, fresh butter, and wild bee honey. During the course of the meal, the entire story of the championship hunt was told, some by Papa, but mostly by me. Just when everything was so perfect and peaceful, <coughs> an argument sprang up between the two oldest girls. <coughs> it seemed that each of them wanted to claim the silver cup. Just when they were on the verge of sawing it in two so each one could have an allotted share, Papa settled the squabble by giving the oldest one a silver dollar. Once again, peace and harmony was restored. That night, as I was preparing for bed, a light flashed by my window. Puzzled, I tiptoed over and peeked through the pane. It was Mama. Carrying my lantern and two large plates heaped high with food, she was headed for the doghouse. Setting the light down on the ground in front of it, she called to my dogs. While they were eating, Mama did something I couldn't understand. She knelt down on her knees in prayer. After they had eaten their food, Mama started petting them. I could hear her voice but couldn't make out her words. Whatever she was saying must have pleased them. Little Anne wiggled and twisted. Even old Dan wagged his long red tail, which was very unusual. Papa came out. I saw him put his arm around Mama. Side by side, they stood for several minutes looking at my dogs. When they turned to enter the house, I saw Mama dab at her eyes with her apron. Lying in bed, staring into the darkness, I tried hard to figure out the strange actions of my parents. Why had Mama knelt in prayer in front of my dogs? Why had she wept? I was running all the whys around in my mind when I heard them talking. I know, Papa said, but I think there's a way. I'm going to have to talk with Grandpa. I don't think that old foot of his is ever going to be the same again. He's going to need some help around the store. I knew they were talking about me, but I couldn't understand why what they meant. Then I thought, why, that's it. They want me to help Grandpa. That would be all right by me. I could still hunt every night. Feeling smart for figuring out the conversation, I turned over and fell asleep. Chapter 19 Although the winning of the cups and the money was a big event in my life, it didn't change my hunting any. I was out after ringtails every night. I had been hunting the river bottoms hard for about three weeks. On that night, I decided to go back to the cyclone timber country. I had barely reached the hunting ground when my dogs struck up a trail. Old Dan opened up first. They struck the trail on a ridge and then dropped down into a deep canyon up the other side and broke out into some flats. I could tell the scent was hot from their steady bawling. Three times they had tried, three times they treed the animal. Every time I would come close to the tree, the animal would jump and the race would be on. After a while, I knew it wasn't a coon. I decided it was a bobcat. I didn't like to have my dogs tree the big cats for their fur wasn't any good, and all I could expect was two cut up hounds. They could kill the largest bobcat in the hills and have on several occasions, but to me it was useless. The only good I could see in killing one was getting rid of a vicious predatory animal. The fourth time they treed, they were on top of a mountain. After the long chase, I figured the animal would, was winded and would stay in the tree. In a trot, I started to them. As I neared the tree, little Anne came to me, reared up, and whined. But her, by her actions, I knew something was wrong. I stopped. In the moonlight, I could see old Dan sitting on his haunches, staring up at the tree and bawling. The tree had lots of dead leaves on it. I knew it was a large white oak because it is one of the last trees in the mountains to lose its leaves. Old Dan kept bawling. Then he did something he had never done before. For seconds, his deep voice was still and silent settled over the mountains. My eyes wandered from the tree to him. His lips were curled back and, his snarl as, and he snarled as he stared into the dark foliage of the tree. His teeth gleamed white in the moonlight. The hair on his neck and along his back stood on end. A low, deep, rumbling growl rolled from his throat. I was scared, and I wanted to get away from there. Again, I called. I, I, I was scared, and I called to him. Again, I called, but it was no use. He wouldn't leave the tree, for in his veins flowed the breeded blood of a hunting hound, and in his fighting heart there was no fear. I set the lantern down and tightened my grip on the handle of the axe. Slowly, I started walking towards him. I thought... If I can get close enough to him, I can grab his collar. I kept my eyes on the tree as I edged forward. Little Anne stayed by my side. She, too, was watching the tree. Then I saw them, two burning, yellow eyes, staring at me from the shadowy foliage of the tree. I stopped, petrified with fear. 
The deep bang of old Dan stopped and again the silence closed in. I stared back at the unblinking eyes. I could make out the bulk of a large animal crouched on a huge branch close to the trunk of the big tree. Then it moved. I heard the scratch of the razor-sharp claws on the bark. It stood up and moved out of the shadows and on to the limb. I saw it clearly as it passed between the moon and me. I knew what it was. It was the devil cat of the Ozarks, the mountain lion. The silence was shattered by one long, loud ball from old Dan. I'd never heard my dog ball like that. It was different. His voice rang out over the mountains loud and clear. The vibration of the deep tones rolled in the silence of the frosty night, on and on, out over the flats, down in the canyons, and died away in the rim rocks, like the cry of a lost soul. Old Dan had voiced his challenge to the devil cat. We're going to stop there. Um, the next part gets really good. Um, but I will warn you that it is sad. Um, and I will cry. Y'all will probably cry. But everything ends, ends well. Um, but I'll just, I'll give you a little, a little bit of warning, um, with that. So, um, that's it for today. I hope y'all are having a good break. I will record more for you tomorrow. Bring some tissues. And I hope y'all have a really good night. I miss you guys. I love you. Um, and I hope to see you soon.